Hi, and welcome back to the second part of today's lecture on determinants, which is part of lecture 16. First, I want to apologize. I guess I forgot to turn off the camera and I, you actually, my face was blocking some of the important material. So important in particular, I was accidentally blocking the definition of the determinant, which was first taking the first entry of your uh, first entry, first row, first column times the determinant of the matrix you get by wiping out row one and column one, and then look, move to the second second entry, and then re remove row one and column two, move the third entry in that row, remove row one and column three, and so on. And as the big point there is you're alternating the signs there. Now, what we're going to be talking about now is just basically an other way to check, determine the definition of the determinant. So if you think carefully about which row of the matrix we're using, we're actually using the top row of the matrix in order to define the determinant, right? So if we go to our example, we have one, two, and one, they're coming from the top row. And all of these sub matrices all come by wiping out a the top row and a particular column of the matrix. But the interesting thing is you don't actually have to use always the top row. The, de the theorem says that a determinant of any matrix can be computed using an expansion about down any row or column. Okay, so precisely, if you decide to use row i, the formula that you want to compute the determinant is minus 1 i plus 1 a i 1 determinant a i 1 plus minus 1 i plus 2 a i 2 and then the determinant of the submatrix a i 2. And we keep going all the way through. So we go dot, 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 all the way to minus one i plus n, a i n, and oops, that should be a determinant. Make that a determinant of a i n. Okay, so notice that the i is fixed because you're going across a row. The power of the negative one is i plus some number. It depends how far along the row you are. So that's how you can keep track. And then a similar formula holds for the columns. So, and again, so your notes have this. We have minus one i plus j a i, oops, a one j determinant of a one j plus minus one two plus j a two j determinant a two j and then plus 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 all the way down to minus one n plus j a n j determinant of a n j and in fact when you plug in one into this formula say you're doing it across the first row so when row i is equal to one you'll get the formula that we have now there's there's some things that you have to do you have to actually prove that all of these numbers are the same thing uh, i'm not even sure if the textbook does it it takes a little bit of work but we'll just take it accept it as fact that all all of these numbers will always give you the same thing and there's some terminology here that we want to capture we want, we want to kind of capture the fact, the submatrix, the determinant of the submatrix and the sign. We, we're not particularly interested in this value here in the next thing that we have. So Cij is going to be negative one i plus j times the determinant of Aij. Okay, so that submatrix we get by removing i and j. And this has a name, is called the ij's cofactor. So the i j cofactor, okay? And the formulas that we have on the previous theorem are called row or column expansions. So the formulas are row or column expansions. And there's a huge advantage to this formula. Namely, it really simplifies your calculations when you're trying to compute the determinant because what you can do is you can pick a row or a column with lots of zeros. So you can simplify calculations by picking rows or columns with lots of zeros. OK, 
Okay, so let me just give you an example. Here's a two by two matrix, and we have a zero we have somewhere in our matrix. So I wanna take advantage of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called the cofactor expansion down the second column. Now I could have done a cofactor expansion down the second row because the second row also has a zero, but I just wanted to kind of show you the column expansion, give you an example of that. So let's do that using the formula. So our determinant of our matrix so we're going down the first column and we'll have minus one raised to the power of one plus two times two times the submatrix that we get by wiping out row one in column two. So we get three, four, one, three. Then we have plus minus one, two, two times zero. And we have one, 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 three here. And then we have plus minus one, three plus two uh, times two times the submatrix one, one, three, four. Now I, I wrote this whole expression right here, but really we don't even, we can kind of simply ignore this because we're multiplying by zero. So everything kind of collapses. Here we get minus one, here we get a two, here we get nine minus four, which is a five. We get a zero here. And over here we get uh, minus one a two and then a four minus three, so we get a minus one. And we'll clean this up. What do we have over here? We have a minus 10, and here we have a plus two, uh, a, sorry, a plus two, but I think I made a mistake. Oh, this should have been a, a regular one. And so this should be minus 12 because we need to have the exact same answer as we did before. It's the same matrix. We always want the determinant to be the same. Okay, so that's the rules and you now know which kind of what you should be doing. So before I, we take a break here, I'm going to give you a four by four matrix and give you a chance to attempt finding the determinant of this matrix. And when we come back, we'll talk about um, how to solve this particular matrix. Okay, I'll see you after, after the break.